Robin Slim Show. Uh, this is Dan Frigolette calling in. Dan Frigolette, how you doing, dude? Doing good, man. How you doing? Not bad, not bad. You're a comedian. Are you in? Do you live in Hoboken, or are you from there? Hoboken, currently, yeah. Cool. Well, you're from uh, Syracuse, correct? I'm from Syracuse and Albany. I'm in Albany right now running uh, something called Make Me Laugh Albany, uh, which is a, a contest we have every year. And uh, so tonight is the open audition round in Albany at the Lark Tavern. So I'm, I'm here... Uh, Judging, judging some folks and deciding who makes it to the finals for a big show. Cool. Anyone, uh, anyone you like? Uh, we haven't seen it yet. It's uh, shows, oh. shows at eight. So as soon as we wrap here, I, I gotta, I gotta put on my, uh, my judgment cap. Oh, awesome, dude. Awesome. Uh, how is this the first time you've done it, or is this, have you, is it been this is year going three? On? The the guy who won the first year, uh, I took him across the country. We drove to Alaska, did forty two shows along the way. Nice. That's awesome, man. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been doing comedy for? Uh, I got to New York City in 05. That's the first sort of official chunk. But I, I had done comedy for maybe a year and a half before that. The problem was when you're from a place like Syracuse, you don't have a lot of opportunities to do comedy, which is which is what the, sort of eventually spawned 10 years later this contest. Because, you know, yeah. in, in Syracuse, we didn't even have a comedy club. I was going to ask, because I know it's like, I know Albany, I know up there is like, it's like a ghost town kind of, right? Albany's cool. Um, Albany had some opportunities. Uh, one comedy club just closed, and then uh, and then another one opened behind it. So there's a funny bone in Albany now. Okay. But prior to this, there there wasn't. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know what the scene up there was like because uh, I, f- I figured the I figured the city had to be the best. Yeah, New York, I mean New York's the best. Mm. It's it where people it's where people do go to do comedy. Yeah, man. I see. I see you open for uh, Jackie Marling. Yeah, no, I, I uh, what did I do? I was on Artie Lang's show, same day as Jackie. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. What was that like? It was cool. Artie Lang's show was great, man. Artie Lang's my boy. I love that guy. Mm. Uh, he's, he's awesome. He was in the news this week, actually, too. I think uh, I think he, he's working on some HBO stuff with uh, Judd Apatow, actually. Nice, nice. That's awesome. Have you done any acting? Because I, um, uh, I saw one of the things. I think it's a... Uh, is it um, a web series you had called The Apartment uh, The Apartment Ship? Apartment Ship. Did you watch that? Dude, it was hilarious. I watched two of them. I watched The Loving Room <laughs> and The Brooklyn Brag. Dude, they were hilarious. Yeah. No, me, yeah, I mean, that was me and Andrew Schultz. Andrew, Andrew's incredible. We worked that thing together uh, before, before he got huge. I, uh, I, I, you know, I'd, I'd seen him around, and I knew, uh, I knew we were, you know, he was going to get huge soon. I was like, let's, let's work on something before you don't have any time. Uh, so we did that thing. Man, I, I'm a horrible actor, but I try my best. Man, I was on Boardwalk Empire as an extra. Cool. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm not good. You know, I try. Yeah, that's cool. Not bad. Uh, I thought, I, I thought the apartment ship was great. I thought it could really be picked up as a sitcom or something. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank no you. problem. Man. Yeah, if I make it up, not if I make it up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I did. I saw you. I saw a couple of your uh, of your acts. I, I really enjoyed. It. I, lo- I love the Silver Alert. That lady was ridiculous. Yeah, that, that was, was like old too. Yeah, dude. What yeah. was she trying to have a conversation with you while you were doing a joke? It was it was ridiculous. That oh, broad. the heckle one, right? <laughs> I said the most horrific thing to that woman, and the crowd was on my side. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Nothing, I, I didn't I, listen I to. What did you been, say? Been, anything worse has been said to somebody. What, what exactly did you say? Because I hadn't gotten a chance to listen to it. Do I? Do I? Do I have censorship here? What, what can I? No. no. Say whatever the fuck you Anything want. Flies. Fuck, I fuck, told fuck, this fuck, woman because uh, she was heckling and, and and she said out loud. She said, "No, I just." She, she's like, "I just." What did she say? Uh, she just no. She said, "No, I I want. I just wanted to hurt your feelings or something like that." I didn't get and that far. Go, oh really? Well, I I hope that you go home and find that your vagina is rotted out of your body. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that far, dude. That's amazing. Because I I was like I was I just and had enough. The crowd was on my side. The crowd was like, "Hell yeah, bro!" <laughs> I couldn't take her, and I don't know when I stopped watching. I watched more than half, but yeah. I was like, I can't take this this bitch anymore. Like, yeah, she, she was, was not. Yeah, it was, she was just heckling for. No, you know, she was just like a drunk. I don't yeah. know. It was a thing. <laughs> I wouldn't say. You know, it wasn't a circumstance where, where where that would ever come up again. Nor would anybody ever be able to say that to a person again. But uh, <laughs> it was just, you know, it was a, it was a just it was a fun rebuttal. <laughs> that always seems that the hecklers are always like a drunk female. Uh, a lot of times, <laughs> it's the females I heard. Yeah, about. that happens. But then when you get in the middle of the country, sometimes it's like. Uh, you know, it's it's like somebody, it's like a dude starts talking, and then it becomes like an ego thing. I've been in situations a lot of times where you know, with sort of a you know, you'll be more 
more in like a rednecky kind of show, like at a firehouse or something. And then and then the guy starts heckling, he, you know, and they try to hit you with the with this this whole just be funny angle or tell a joke when they're like disrupting the show kind of angle. Mm. Um, if I if I you know if I find somebody who's uh, who's a redneck and they're kind of going that route, so initially they they immediately almost start going to like the fight route. So then I, I try to de-escalate by, uh, by, by going to homophobia. I literally just go, hey, man, I can't tell you trying to fight me or make out with me. And then it always sort of, like, works itself out. I was going to ask if you ever had gotten in an altercation. No, you know what? I, there's, a, there's, a, there's enough in my personality that, that somewhere between, like, I can, you know, I can talk my way out of it and kind of charisma the situation. Yeah. And then the other half is, like, nobody really knows what my ethnicity is. So they don't know if I'm holding a knife. You know what I mean? Like, they're not really sure. I got I, just enough. I figured Italian. Yeah, I'm Italian. But I got, you know, so I got just enough street cred. I could be Dominican. I could be Puerto Rican. I could be, I, you know, I could be Israeli. Nobody knows. <laughs> nice, nice. You know what I mean? You only want, you only hit, you generally, when people that fight, they only want to hit somebody if they know exactly what they are. Yeah. You know? Yes, because you need to know. Right, you, you, see, you, you can, so you got you can pick you can pick which uh, which epith epithet to say to them. Yeah, that and you don't know what kind of like group is coming after you, like yeah. You, <laughs> but of, you know, those are, the people that hit people, you know, that's the, that's the, that's their whole ordeal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice, dude. Nice. What uh? What? what what's uh, going, so what's going on? You guys are holding down the six six oh nine. You guys are you guys are looked out for me. Yeah, dirty Jersey man. We're uh we're by LBI. Okay. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. I'm from uh, I'm from Bergen County, uh, Slim and Pete. Well, Pete, you're from uh, what Red I'm Bank? Originally from yeah, Monmouth. Yeah, I grew up. Okay, very cool, very cool. Yeah, you know, I found out about Jersey people. You guys like to talk in uh, in numbers a lot. I'd be like, oh, where are you from? I'm like, oh, exit thirteen on the uh, on the turnpike. Right. I don't know what that is, man. Did you say a city? I thought we're doing cities. I've like, never done the number talk nah, there. Like, good, nah. thank God, man. I don't, I don't understand it. Yeah, yeah. it's just such a small state that that's you, you can. That's get how you know. Go, you, know. Go, you know, right off exit twenty four there by the, uh, by the hot dog stand. No, man, I have no idea where that is. I'm sorry. And it's all either turnpike or parkway. That's it, man. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exit twenty three at the parkway. I don't know what that is, man. Sorry. What about Route seventeen? Uh, that I remember from when I was younger. That was horrible to drive on. Yeah. That was a fucking nightmare. I used to have to take that to work every day, man. That's funny, man. <laughs> Jersey. Mm -hmm. Jersey in the house. Man, was it uh was it real different from uh from Syracuse? Like, did you have to adjust when you came came down here? You know what's weird? The more I travel the country, the more I realize everything is the same. The same shit, yeah. Right. Everybody's the same, everything's the same. You know, everybody's got the guy that does this thing, the guy, you know. The guy yeah. who did that, I think, there's a ton of, you know, there's a ton of people, uh, in, you know, in Albany, Schenectady, or, who are homeless doing the same games that they're doing in New York. Mm. Uh, you know, in Syracuse, is the same, they're the same kind of people that uh, that are never going to get out of the town that, that, as there are in Oklahoma City. Mm. You know, it's just, we're all kind of, we're all the same, yeah. you know, and, and, and as soon as they started putting up... Uh, all these poison food stands like McDonald's and KFC and everything around us, we, you know, it, it became even more uh, real that we're all the same. That controls us, I think, that garbage food and, and <laughs> fucking yeah. social media. Yeah, man. I did like, though, I did see, too, you said that, uh, what, in Texas, the, the DUI signs were, you can't afford, you can't yeah, afford it. Yeah, the letters, DUI with a slash through it, you can't afford it. That's the whole sign, man. What's, what are they going for then? <laughs> we have one here. It's like a, I think a crash car and like a a beer bottle yeah. and is it a beer dead baby terrible, on it or something? It's like, like beer is yeah, a terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that was my old joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have that side, dude. Or there's one with like three like high school students that died in a drunk driving. Yeah, like, it's so morbid, so morbid. That's a that's a street sign on the highway. Uh, yeah, on Route Nine over here, there's one with like three kids, like the, like uh, the 18 year old kids that like were drinking and driving that died. They also got the one. With I feel the, like. Uh, no symbol and there's the skeleton holding the beer like i didn't see that one dude that was <laughs> oh the three the three kids seems like it's more of a hazard than a help i feel like i'll be reading that time being like looking at the kids and i'll catch some tears in my eyes and then i'm gone right too. i know that's really i know that's i think when i one, first man. saw it i pulled over i'm like what the fuck is that that's crazy and yeah it's like that's three kids. i'm trying to read this sign next thing i know i'm in a i'm in a ditch <laughs> <laughs> you, have take, you have to take a picture of that. That's yeah, that, that's, nine, it's, it's still yeah. there, I think. It's it's on 9 somewhere. Uh, around here, I think. 
around here. Yeah. What, uh, that's what I was going to ask. Could you have afforded it? Yeah, that's the thing. That's, yeah, that's the, uh, that, that's the big side because you can't afford it. Like, as if that's the, as if that's the motivating factor not to drink and drive. <laughs> New York State is smart, man. Our, our sign is stay alive, don't drink and drive. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's the like, message, man. Short and simple. Get easy to stay alive. alive. Yup. I don't, who cares if you get caught and, and it costs money? Why is that the angle? <laughs> Well, Could you say be safe, moron? Yeah. <laughs> Buckle up, you stupid fuck. Drive <laughs> like a human being, you shitbag. <laughs> nice, dude. Nice. <laughs> what um? Do you have any other upcoming like projects, Dan? Like yeah, acting? man. So okay, so the make me laugh stuff is, is big, man. It's, it's it's our third year here. I love this city. It's like my parents just moved back to. Connected. It was just outside here. My grandfather's still here. My grandparents are here. My sisters is here. Uh, I, I just love this area. I've loved this area for a long time. So make me laugh, Albany. Once we get done next weekend is the finals. Uh, then I'm moving on to some other stuff. Um, what's going to happen is the winner of this most likely will be invited to uh, to join me on a cross country trip this coming March and April. I'm planning on being the, on the road for close to 60 days, I think, this time. Uh, and uh, I already started playing some of the gigs. I got uh, I got Springfield, Missouri. I'm hitting up twice. And but uh, I'm driving to Portland in like three weeks. But actually, it's not even. I'm in turn to Portland, like yeah, like well, two and a half weeks. Um, with a friend of mine, she wanted to drop off a dog to her brother. Uh, and and I said, hey, let me hop along. And I ended up picking up a bunch of shows along the way. So I'm gonna do some shows in Portland, Oregon. I picked up Champaign, Illinois, and Effingham, Illinois. Cool. And I'm gonna hit up some other stuff on the way back. Spokane, Salt Lake City. <laughs> Pardon me. When you do shows, like on the road, do you uh, have local guys that that open for you, or do you bring your own guys? Yeah, you can do it. You can do it a number of different ways. When when I'm driving the whole thing and I'm doing a month, I'll bring my guys. And that's the other thing that that uh, that these contests have uh, have opened my eyes to is that there's good comedy everywhere. So you know, I, I, did, I was doing com You know, I did one of these contests in, uh, in St. Louis where we picked up a guy who uh, who's absolutely incredible. He's one of the funniest people I've ever met. His name is Andrew Frank. And uh, I, I took him across the country with me twice. Cool. And then uh, and then I met a guy through doing the Hoboken Comedy Festival named uh, Shane Clark. And he's living up there in Washington. So when I was in Portland last round, I grabbed him and had him come and do, uh, we, I think we did six shows together in Portland and Salem and Eugene, Oregon. Um, so you can do it either way, man. It's just sometimes it's hard to reach out and, and, uh, and get instant credibility with guys on uh, in other places, you know. Yeah. Uh, if you if you're putting the show on, the honestly the easier way to do it is just is just find a show that's already out there and then just uh, say, hey, I want to do the show and have them book you and you just you just go on and do it. But I've been mm -hmm. producing shows for a long time, so um, my natural instinct is to just rent a room or you know or find a guy who's got a back room, do the thing, market the hell out of it, and then find a couple supporting guys. Nice. Uh, has there already been anything ever uh, crazy that's happened to you traveling? Yeah, man, crazy shit happens all the time, man. Um, one of the craziest, one of the craziest things actually was uh, we didn't have a place. Well, there, so we were we were on tour, and and, uh, and and some of the details of the tour got kind of got kind of effed up, and we had some people that were supposed to be contributing that were basically not contributing, and we were stuck in this kind of situation. We were like, I don't even know what to do with this. Like, we're, on the, we're in a car for the next 30 days, and some resentment's starting to build up. So we're like, we don't even know what to do with this person who's not contributing uh, from, a, from a comedic standpoint, from a, from a, a logistic standpoint, really at all. It's just, wow. it's just uh, somebody becoming a nuisance. Yes, and, a burden. Uh, and, and a complete burden. And so one of the, so one of the places, so because of that, we had, uh, we had added some costs to the trip that we didn't anticipate. And so... Uh, I'm, I was scrambling to, to move a venue in Oklahoma City because there was a venue that did basically zero work, um, and then they uh, and they were and they were pointing a lot of fingers at me. So I said, you know, when I have 100 people coming to, to this show and 50 people coming to the next one, I'm just going to move this to another venue, and you know, and I'll call the other venue when when it's done. So I'm dealing with that, dealing with the nuisance, and then on top of that, we didn't have a place to stay yet in Oklahoma City, and I, I hate hotels. It's just one of my. It's, I'm just kind of grossed out by them. I don't like them. Yeah. So I got on. So I got on the dating sites and I started swiping, trying to find us a house. <laughs> so it was me and uh, me and four other people in the car, and uh, and I was able to uh, to make some friends uh, through the dating sites over 
you know, 18 hours and, and we got offered a house. Basically we, we, we stayed, we stayed at this, this wonderful, uh, this girl, Kim, we stayed at this, this girl, Kim's house. Oh, she housed us all. There was uh, four of us, air, air beds and, and couches and floors. And, and we took over her house for the weekend and she's like a dear friend to all of us now. Wow, that's that's crazy that someone cool. would open up their yeah. house to you guys like that. That's it's incredible, yeah, yeah. Oklahoma On a City, dating baby. site too. No, and then you know, and then it's tough because then you're in that situation. You're like, all right, we went on a dating site. We didn't really, you know, I don't know where we didn't talk about anything. So it's like now, now it's the question becomes: Is there an anticipation here, right? Like, am I like like is is payment for me staying at this house? Did you have to go on a some date? Some sort of uh, you know yeah. under the sheets kind of situation. Yeah, yeah so, that's what I was gonna like, ask you, know, you too. My first thought yeah, was like, like, did you sleep like, with her? Like, yo, do I have to bang this chick for rent? Like, what's the deal? <laughs> <laughs> um, so no, nothing like you know, nothing like that ended up happening. We were you know, and and that you know, she was she was again, she was great, and uh, it was she just really she just saw we were we were in need, and she just she's a good person, and she just took care of us. That's cool. You guys should do that with your she couch. Became, she became tour mom. <laughs> you guys should let like drifters sleep on your couch. We do. We do. We oh, do. you do that. You already? guys do? No. <laughs> <laughs> we should though. We got the uh, pull out couch. Yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah, oh. dude. I mean, it's a weird. It's a weird world now. Like you know, it's funny. It's because like that was a that was a more common practice in the past, right? Seventies, eighties, hitchhiking, all those sorts of things. Yep. Yeah. People doing that. You got people sleep on your couch, things like that. People trust the people a little bit more. All those sorts of things. Yeah. People doing that. You got people sleep on your couch, things like that. People trust the people a little bit more. Yeah. Then we got paranoid in the 90s, 2000s, and now we're doing it again with Airbnb. We're just letting weirdos in our houses. Uh, as long as they pay us $20, it's cool all of a sudden again. <laughs> Uber is basically a hitchhiking service, isn't it? One of my friends, uh, is like, his, uh, wife, his father-in-law is like one of those dudes. He doesn't have a house. He just stays on people's couches like a drifter. Really? Man. Yeah. And he figures crazy. it out. Man, that's the thing, man. That's what I learned, uh, you know. For for being on the road a little bit and, and and just meeting various people, man. If you got charisma and you can talk, uh, you can kind of figure life out, man. You can be you can be a homeless dude without actually uh, suffering through some of the homeless stuff. We should yeah. do that as a bit. We'll send you out, Slim, for like a, a month or a year. Yeah, but I don't have any charisma. I no, won't get anywhere. I know. You're, you're <laughs> people would just, yeah, yeah. People would just think out. I'm a creep. And like, <laughs> I'll get arrested several did. times. <laughs> like, yeah. It's harder. It's harder for a dude. It's harder for a dude. Like, yeah. you know, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be safe for a girl. But I was going to say that. It's definitely harder for a dude. Yeah. To seem innocent. To be to be an innocent-seeming dude is a hard, is a hard thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's true. Because everybody's seen, you know, everybody's seen what men can do. We do horrible things for <laughs> thousands and thousands of years. <laughs> we, are, we are capable of horrific the, things. But most, the most atrocious things. But those, those horrible men built civilization. Ah, it's a man's <laughs> yeah. world, baby. Yeah. It is true. Yeah. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> That's it. We're fucked. We are fucked. What the worst? <laughs> now we might, you know, we might, we might have a woman president here in ten minutes. So, I know. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens in in the new chapter where women, uh, women build and and unbuild civilization. Is she we'll even a woman though? I don't know. I feel she's like a cyborg. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. think she's like, uh, a lizard. A person. lizard. There. A reptilian cyborg <laughs> warrior. <laughs> she kind of seems glitchy, like she's like twitching and stuff. I think it's like a like a, a problem in the the programming. I don't know, man. It's a bunch of losers up for up for uh, up for election right now. <laughs> who, who do you want to win, Trump or Hillary? You know what? I've been I've been uh, I've been I've been listening to to, to some fun things that the people said last night. Louis was on uh, last night. Louis was on the Tonight Show. No, uh, he was on Conan. Uh, Oprah was on uh, was on was on Tavis Smiley or something, and uh, you know everybody's out there talking. I mean, I'm still confused as to what Trump's actual goal is. Yeah, because Trump was one of Trump was one of the biggest Hillary supporters there was twelve <laughs> months know. ago. So all of a sudden, you know, it's it's a very strange uh, ordeal that we've we've gotten ourselves into. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I don't. But I don't know that anybody thinks that uh, that he will make an actual good president. Nah, that's it. It's almost gotten to the point where 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 the where the basically the rebuttals uh, for you know for why to you know for why to vote for Trump is just some sort of anti-Hillary stuff, which is a weird way to go. Yes, you know, I'd rather be if you're going to vote for Trump, I'd rather have you be pro-Trump than anti-Hillary. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you want to like the guy you're voting for, not just hate the other one more. 
No, you know what? Well, you don't have to like him, but you, you know. Um, and that was Oprah's point. She said, you don't have to like Hillary. She's not coming to your house. But you have to vote for her if you like this country. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I, yeah, don't. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't like Hillary, don't vote for Trump. But if you don't like, if you don't like Trump, by all means, vote for Hillary. <laughs> Double standard, baby. Because <laughs> at least we know. We at least she has some. She has some now. You know what I mean? I would rather. Right. I would rather have a comedian who I don't particularly care about. And don't particularly think is is incredible, and don't think is going to be the next Carlin. I'd rather have that person on stage because I know that they're a comedian than a person that was walking in off the street and was like, "I think I can do this." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'd much rather have the person who's done it a couple times and maybe does an okay job. That's, that's a good way to put the it. Guy yeah. who just you know, razor scootered into the back room and said, what's going on back here, guys? I can do this. Yeah, like I said earlier, he's he has everything. He's done everything. Yeah. This is just the next what step. What do I do this now? Is, yeah. No, no, Donald, no, Donald Trump is, is the, is the is, you know, as a president will be the open micer his first day on the mic. That's not the guy you, want, you know what I mean? He kind of so, was look, like... Three minutes, three minutes, you might have a couple good things to say, but once you get to minute six, oh. it gets real and everybody's pissed that you're even up there. It's getting hairy, up. Yep. Exactly. What, what were you gonna say, Pete? He kind of does have that, like, I, I don't know. He's just he, he was kind of just cracking a lot of jokes the entire like. Ah, it's it's like a reality show. Yeah, like, that, that's well, what I feel like I'm watching, like an insult. Oh, it, it's like it, it it definitely is like a pro wrestling. <laughs> it's like pro wrestling. Yeah, yeah he is. Like, he it is. really is. <laughs> He's Jesse the Body Ventura, baby. <laughs> <laughs> No, my two two buddies that I went to college with um, ended up uh, working on this project, and I didn't know what it was at the time, but it, tur it turned into a Netflix movie. But as it was as it was coming out, I didn't know what, what they were doing. They kept getting uh, picked up in the news, going to uh, political rallies and kind of making scenes. So these two guys went to the Trump one of the Trump rallies in Connecticut, fully dressed in Trump gear. They were cheering them on. They're having a good time. Trump's making jokes. They're laughing at the jokes. You know, now we think you're so funny, and then like. 20 minutes into the speech, Trump stopped telling jokes, and they just started yelling out. They go, hey, Trump, be funny, man. This is boring. Be funny. And uh, it turned into this, this movie's called Undecided. It's on Netflix right now. It's super nice. funny. Oh, wow. Um, That's awesome, dude. And they basically trolled, they trolled the whole campaign. One of the, uh, one of the nights they were they like made a big scene of the Paul Ryan rally. One of the, one of the guys stood up during uh, 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 Rubio. Uh, his speech, and he was like, Rubio's trying to steal my girlfriend. He's so handsome. Uh, also, hey, Dan, we actually have to cut this off, yeah, man. Can dude. you uh, let everybody know where they can find you, and then we'll let you go. Oh, you guys are awesome. Check me out, Dan Frigolat. Uh, Snapchat me, Dan Frigolat. Instagram me, Dan Frigolat. Facebook, Dan Frigolat, page two. Well, I was going to say page two, but now i got to open up a page three. I just maxed out my Dan Frigolat page two. Don't hate me. Wow. Uh, it's just what happened. Mm. Um Twitter, Dan Frigolat. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Dude, thanks for coming fun. on. You're great, dude. Have me again. Excellent. We will, man. And keep supporting these guys. They're uh, they're on exit three off of the uh, the turnpike. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you at the rest stop. Yeah. All right. Thank All you. right. Later, Dan. Later, Dan.